illustrate some of the concepts from section 2.2 using these cool Desmos activities that I have on the week 4 schedule page. Let's start with this first one that shows you the idea of a secant line approaching the tangent line as you let delta t get closer and closer to zero. So I'm just going to click on this first Desmos activity link here and you see that the function that they are illustrating this concept on is e to the x. Hmm, that might be my favorite function, so I'm not going to change it. But if you wanted to, you could change this to a different function. Anyhow, there's two different sliders involved here. There's one for the parameter a, and there's one for the parameter h. Now, in terms of what's going on in the book, the point at which we wish to approximate the derivative, that point is denoted as a. So you can see that that's where the secant line is starting, um, here a is set to 0, and so that's why you see the first dot at 0. But if I move the a this way or that way, you see that the left-hand point of the secant line, the thing that defines the starting point for the red line, moves according to the value of a. So that's the point at which we wish to evaluate the derivative. And as we learned in the section 2.2, the um, approximate value of the derivative is found by considering the slope of the secant line. A secant line is a line that connects two points on a graph. And uh, as we merge those two points closer and closer and closer together, you see I'm doing that by making h closer and closer to zero, Eventually, they get so close together that kind of merge there, and then you see that the red line is just touching the graph. Sometimes when something's just touching it and it's not going through it, we call that tangent to it, and so that's the tangent line, okay? So secant line is a line that connects two separated points on a graph with a line. And a tangent line is when those two points merge together and the red line is now just touching the graph at one singular value. And the value that it's tangent is, again, that point A. So when I move this around, you can see that that's, um, that red line moves tangent to the curve um, at the point A. So that's what the two sliders do. So if somebody asks me to evaluate or to approximate the derivative for e to the x um, at the point maybe a is equal to 0, so I would set the a is equal to 0 there. And then I would move this closer and closer together, and I would be looking at the slope of this line as h approaches 0. Okay, well that's all well and good, but I guess I'll have to break out my pencil and paper to actually evaluate the function and actually calculate the average rate of change, the difference in the outputs divided by the difference in the inputs. Um, here the difference in the inputs is exactly this value h. Um, some, sometimes they call this value h and sometimes they call it delta t. So when you read the book and you see delta t, that's the difference between the two points on a secant line, and here that's being denoted by h. Well, here's another cool activity that kind of builds off of what I showed you there, but it also calculates the slope of that line, um, and you can change it to be any function you wish. So now I'm going to open up that second one, and you see that on this activity, they're using a down-facing parabola as their example. Um, but so that I can show you how well this aligns with what you're learning in the textbook, I am going to change this function to the down-facing parabola that is on page 72. In section 2.2, on page 72, you'll see this example of a falling object, and the height of that object is 100 minus 16 times t squared. But here, the input value is x, so where it says t there, I'm going to put an x. Um, now you see that this looks a little crazy on my graph because I just kind of see two black vertical lines, but that's just because I'm zoomed, to, um, zoomed in a little too much. Now there's a couple different ways to zoom out. You can just click on this minus button and you can zoom out like that. But you see, when you do that, it zooms out in the x and the y, and you might not necessarily want that. I'm going to try to align what I'm showing here with figure 2.3 on, on page 72. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this graph settings icon and just like figure 2.3 in the book, I'm going to set it so the input is going from about 0 to, you can see it goes to 2.5 on theirs, maybe I'll extend mine to 3. Um, and then the Y axis starts at 0 and you can see the Y goes all the way up to 100 because that's the initial height of the object. Um, maybe if I zoom out a little bit more, you'll kind of see that a little better. And um, let's see, maybe I'll just put a little bit of negative on this so you can just see the axis, right? So now you can see the X axis below. And so when I'm done playing with the X and the Y um, max and min there, I'm going to click on that to get rid of it. And you see I have a picture here that looks much more similar to what is being shown on figure 2.3. If I zoom out on that, it works a lot better than just zooming out initially on um, the thing that was first graphed. Okay, so on page 73, you're going to see that um, they're working out the approximation of the derivative at the point x is, or t is equal to 1.5. So I'm going to change the t. I'm going to change the value that I'm approximating the derivative at to 1.5. And remember, that's denoted with the parameter a for me. So I'm going to set my a to 1.5. And that's because they're working with a t value starting at 1.5. The delta t here is represented by h. And so you see on page 73 of the book, the first delta t that they use is 0.1. And so here's a Desmos illustration of what's being calculated on page 73. They are calculating the slope of that red line that's connecting points P and Q, where P is what we're calling A over here, that's the starting value. And then Q is the point that's exactly H units away, um, or delta T units away from that starting point. And then this Desmos is really nice because you have the slope calculated here, right, for you. It's minus 49.6, and that's exactly what they have in the book. Um, this is really fun to be on here because the calculations you see on the book are really easy for us to do on this little activity. If we want to change our delta t to 0 0.01, we'll just add a 0 right there. And you can see that those two points got a lot closer together. And now the output for the slope of the secant line as negative 48.16. That's exactly the calculation that's um, a little bit more than halfway down the page on page 73. And then they try again with delta t is equal to 0 0.001. And then they get exactly that number for the next step. And then exercise 2.2.5 asks you to repeat that one more time for delta t is equal to 0 0.0001. And you can imagine what I'm going to do next to get that answer. That's right. So that's the answer right there. That's the slope that you're going to get in exercise 2.2.5. But really, when you do this on your homework, you're going to want to write it out algebraically as you see them do in the previous lines right above that. Um, so this is a really fun and handy way for you to check your homeworks. I'm going to illustrate um, how you can use this on other problems as well. On exercise 2.2.10 on page 77, they have us interpret, uh, I'm sorry, approximate the derivative or the rate of change of air pressure as it varies with elevation. That looks pretty complicated, but you know what? I'm just going to type it in exactly how I see it there, and I'll get a nice visual on that, and then I can uh, let A is equal to 2,000 because that's the height they want me to evaluate it at, and I'll get a nice visual of exactly what I'm trying to do algebraically in problem 2.2.10. So this thing that I'm about to type in is going to represent the function P of H, but they're calling it X, uh, F of X here, and so I know that even though my input in the book is capital H, I'm going to use a little x. Zero, oh sorry, one zero one three five two times E, and you can just type in the letter E, Desmos knows what that is. And then you do the caret, which is uh, pressing shift and the number six. That's what um, raises it to the exponential there. Then when I type in the exponential quantity, just to be sure um, I'm doing this right, I'm going to use some sort of parentheses here. And I'm going to do negative 0.28h, so I'm going to put an x where I see the h, divided by 2396. 
two, three, nine, six. And then I'm gonna move my cursor over and close that parentheses. Hey, where's my graph? Uh, let's see, well, e to the zero is one. Hopefully you remember that. So I know that when x is equal to zero, my output is gonna be one, zero, one, three, five, two. So I can't see the graph because my y is not zoomed out enough. So just um, recalling what I know from pre-calculus one helps me to know how to change these axes so I can visualize my graph. I'm gonna let the y go from zero to one zero one three five two because I know that that's basically where the input, sorry, where the um, where the y-axis intercept is. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see that graph a little more. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change the X to go. Uh, they want us to plug in the number 2,000, huh? So maybe I'll have this go to 3,000. There's my graph. You see it's just starting to peak out there at the top. Uh, it might be a little bit better if I change this to maybe 1, 0, 2,000 so I can have a little wiggle room there. And if I zoom out now, you can see that this graph, a little bit hard to find, but there it is right there. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I did. I set it to 300 instead of 3,000. So for my x, I'm gonna want to go from zero to at least 3,000 uh, to at least 2,000 because they're asking me to evaluate it at 2,000. So I meant to zoom it out to 3,000. So um, with the zoom set like that, we can see that here, right here, is where they want us to approximate the derivative at the number h is equal to 2,000. So I'm going to type that in for my a, because the value of a is where they want you to evaluate the derivative. I'm going to put that at 2,000 there. And then for my delta t, well, I could start with uh, successively smaller approximations. So I could start with maybe an h of like 100. I'm just making that ridiculously large so that you can see the two points separated on this scale. You'd never use a delta t that big though, or even as big as 10, or even as big as 1. Usually you're going to use something that's like 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001. Um, and there you can see the points P and Q have merged pretty close together. Hey, check it out. They're outputting the slope. And um, I can see how this slope of the secant line is um, getting closer and closer to the actual instantaneous rate of change as I make h smaller and smaller. So I want you to focus your attention here on the value of the slope as I change it from 1 to 0.1 to 0.01, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, And you can see that when I make the delta t really small, I'm getting an output for the slope that's going to approximate the um, actual instantaneous rate of change in P really well. And I'm getting something that's around negative 9.3755. Now, if the output P is measured in pascals and the input H is measured in meters, what are the units of dP, dH going to be? Remember from pre-calculus that when we're talking about a slope, the units of the slope are always the y units divided by the x units, and that's because it's rise over run. So the units of this would be negative 9.3755 pascals per meter. And so that kind of helps with the interpretation because that's telling me that um, for every additional meter of elevation that I increase, exactly at this point, the um, air pressure in pascals is going down, that's where the negative comes from, by about 9.3755 pascals. Okay, so I hope that using these tools helps you to work out your homework, but again, when you're doing these problems out, you're also going to want to um, try to do some hand calculating of what the output values are and uh, calculate the approximate rate of change old school by writing out the difference of the outputs divided by the difference of the inputs just so you can really solidify your understanding. Thanks for watching!